Hi, I'm Krista Jacobson, headmistress of the Buddha Dukai, where we teach authentic ninjutsu and classical samurai bujutsu. And for those of you who don't know what that is, those are the ancient martial arts of the ninja and samurai. In today's video, we are going to discuss depression, fear, anxiety, and stress uh, for martial artists. That's going to be the subject of today's video. Now, before we begin, if you guys have not already subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do so. Um, as I said to start, my name is Krista Jacobson. I'm the head of the Budo Dikai, which means School of the Warrior Way. We teach um, classical Japanese martial arts. We teach Koru arts. So those are the ancient martial arts of the ninja and samurai, so ninjutsu and bujutsu. But our YouTube channel is has tons of playlists on it and I upload two to three videos a week so um, please subscribe to the channel so if you guys are into martial art thoughts philosophy um, training drills self-defense reality based self-defense survival skills ninjas and samurai anything anything along those lines please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to click the bell so you guys get the notifications right so um, yeah let's talk about today's uh, today's video I will say that because I have so many um, different playlists on my YouTube channel today, this is going to be a vlog video because it's not its not specifically about martial arts, today's topic, um, but we are using martial arts training to help in the aid of depression and fear and anxiety and stress. And um, I'm going to use martial arts training to help people better understand how they can cope with those, those type of emotional um, those type of emotions in their life, okay? Um, I do want to say that before I begin with this, uh, that, you know, I'm not a doctor, I'm a martial art teacher, so if you guys have, are really battling depression and, and anxiety and you're battling it really, really, really hard, please see a doctor, please see a professional. You know, it isn't something that, you know, can be taken lightly. It is something that's real and, um, you know, everyone needs help in their life in some realm or another. So if you feel like you need to see somebody for your depression or your anxiety or whatever that is, you know, please do that, okay? Um, I want to say that to start. Now, um, the reason I'm making this particular video is because we're going into the last quarter of the year, right? We got, right now it's October, and um, hold on. Let that shit drive by, right? Okay, so right now it's the middle of October, and I was reading this study, and it says that there are four times more suicides from October 31st to January 1st than there are in the United States for the rest of the other months. You know what I mean? And that is, that's serious. So basically it's saying like in a two month time period uh, here in the States, there's four times more suicide than there is in 10 months within the year, right? I mean, you know, give or take a couple weeks, but roughly that's, that's what this particular study that I was reading said. And I was just like, damn. And um, I started thinking about that. And I read that kind of at the beginning, about a week or two ago of, of October. And as I'm going through my day and I'm going through everything, I've noticed that lots of other people have been kind of fighting it a little bit here in my, my normal run of life. And um, it's something that I've kind of discussed even at the Hanbu Dojo too. It's like, you know, people are starting to come down a little bit. And in our version of martial arts, and I say our version or our way or whatever, I teach the ancient arts of the samurai and ninja, right? So Koryu. And in that, in that particular type of martial art, you know, it's meant for like war and battlefield and Miyamoto Masashi and all that kind of stuff. So you always devise a, a strategy. And once you get a strategy, you use the tactics necessary to complete the objectives to, to do what it is that you're trying to do. Well, I think a lot of times so many, we all get wrapped up in our lives that we don't actually make strategies for things that are coming forward. And when I read this, I was like, well, from, from basically from October 31st or Halloween all the way to January 1st, New Year's, you got all the holidays going on. You got more time with family than usual. A lot of people have financial issues and all this kind of stuff. And I can just see where a lot of depression and anxiety and stuff comes from. So I kind of want to cover a couple different areas and help you guys use your martial arts skills and the skills that you learn in martial arts on how to develop strategies and so forth to kind of help you deal with all the things that happen and the emotions that happen through the rest of this year. And it is something that even at the dojo we deal with every single year towards the end of every year. And if I make this video now, hopefully this will help people better understand this type of year and the energy that it gives off and then how to cope with it better. At this time of year, everything's dying. And I know some people really don't want to get into 
you know, some people aren't very spiritual or religious or they really don't believe in feeling energy and all that kind of stuff and some people do. Well, I do. And it's very, I, I can't separate natural energy and the universe from my martial arts teaching. I, I think, I know that there's a lot of people don't do that kind of stuff, but to me, I think it's something that it is intertwined and being connected to the natural elements and something that's very, a crucial aspect towards the training of martial arts, at least in, in the, the, the ancient arts that we teach. And at this time of the year, everything's dying. The trees are losing their leaves. The, the grass is, um, the grass is getting, it's not green anymore. It's dying. All the plants are dying. You know, you don't see the flowers bubbling up anymore. You don't see the animals running around having sex and making babies and all that kind of stuff. And you know, the rabbits and the squirrels and all this kind of stuff. You don't ever see that kind of thing. You know, it's everything's, the birds are flying down south and you don't see the, the rabbits and the squirrels and all the flowers are dying. And even though whether you guys believe in the universal energy or that, that surrounds us or not, whether you believe in that or not, one thing that you can't not believe in is what is happening. And when you're driving down the road or walking around like this on a beautiful day, you do see it. Even if it's, you know, subliminal or whatever at a sub level, you do see it. And it does take a toll that everything around you is dying and it does bring you down a bit. When you're in an area where flowers are blooming and you see the rabbits and the squirrels and the people taking their dogs for a walk and the leaves are blooming and the fruits growing on the tree, there's this sense of life. There's a sense of energy. It's, it's very positive energy and it exudes and we see that and that puts us in a much better spirit. And it, 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 it rejuvenates us to really feel like, oh, I'm going to do something. I'm going to go on a, I'm going to go on a vacation. You know, everyone goes on vacation in, in the summer. Why? Because it makes them feel like that. No one's like, ah, oh, fuck, you know, it's most people aren't like, ah, oh, fuck, it's December. So let me, let me go on a vacation. I mean, most people don't, you know what I mean? Most people are like, oh, it's the summer. I'm going to go on a vacation. It's, it's, it's summer and it's the sun's out and everything. It's happy, happy. And I'm going to go have some more fun. Right. And, and they, they perpetuate that happiness and they keep that, that energy moving. Right now, that's not what's happening. And October 31st, we got only in a couple more weeks, we got what, you, what a lot of people call Halloween. Or for you pagans and uh, witches and Wiccans out there, we would say uh, uh, Samhain. And, um, you know, October 31st. And if you're into the spirituality and this, the, the religious aspects of that, then there's that, that connection where it's the, 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 the thinnest line between this world and the other world, right? The afterlife, I guess, so to speak. The spirit world. So that, that right there is that thinnest moment between what we see here and in, and that particular realm. Um, it, we're not going to get into that in this video, but that's that moment where you start becoming closer. If you think about it, you start becoming closer with the dead. Because even, even in Halloween, even if you're just the average person is like, ah, fuck it, it's Halloween or Day of the Dead and we're just going to dress up and do whatever. And you still know at least a, a basic idea of the historical um, relevance of where you're 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 supposed to be giving your thanks and showing you know a little bit of credit back to the ancestors and those who have died before us and gone before us and you know you make a little altar and maybe somebody died in your in your past it's part of your family that you miss and you give and this is that this is that moment where that that veil is at its thinnest you can commune and connect and you know you burn a, you burn a candle on Halloween for maybe your father's passed away or your mom's passed away or something like that or your grandpa that you haven't that they were very close to or something along those lines you make a little shrine and that's that moment where you can you can you give that to the dead you give back you give give back to your ancestors and your loved ones who have already gone well that starts it October 31st and then and it now on from a reality perspective most people feel a lot of stress in this world because of finances and to be quite honest with you I'm gonna spend a lot more time on finances than the rest of it because it's something that everybody can connect to so if you guys are watching this video I'm not gonna to get too spiritual with you guys um, it's hard for me to detach from it but I'm gonna spend more a little bit more time on the financial aspect of what's going to happen and how to kind of prepare yourself from that than the rest of it but here we go so we've got this Halloween idea and the day of the dead and all this kind of stuff so as we're doing that you're already starting to come down your energy levels are coming down you're a little depressed trees are dying no more flowers coming down and then it's halloween and it's that you know you're, you're you're given you're having a you literally make a shrine for someone that you love very much you can't see anymore right and, and then you know so to speak and then you have all that stuff going on depending on how you choose to to celebrate the Samhain or halloween or whatever whatever your uh, celebration is for that day and 
and then so then that now you're right there right and then but one thing everyone does during that Halloween uh, that holiday is to spend money most people make X and spend X you know what I mean and that, I mean most people and they maybe have a five extra bucks in their pocket by the end of the week you know that kind of thing and they probably blow it on a Happy Meal or a Big Mac that type of shit but anyway Halloween happens and there's an expense that most people don't a lot for most people don't say okay when I when I get my money this month I need to make sure I have enough for Halloween right so they just they just kind of go with it then here comes Thanksgiving most people don't a lot for the money for that and you're buying the turkey and you're buying the stuffing and then you got to spend time with the family and most people most people get irritated as shit spending time with their family to be quite honest with you I mean I, I don't I mean I, there's I, very few people that I know in my life you know just love everyone getting together and you have like the big table that has 26 people and they're all holding hands singing kumbaya and doing a circle dance around a fire I mean it's not not the norm I mean not that I don't love my family I love my family it's just most people don't that there there's a lot more stress going on family stress is worse than any other kind of stress you know what I mean so then you got the family you got the Thanksgiving going on you got the money that's being spent and you had the money that was spent the previous month in October then here comes December same thing more family problems again this time it's a month later so now you're really in the middle of the family shit Fan stress again you got to buy all the gifts for everybody you got to travel around say you know Merry Christmas Happy Yule Hanukkah whatever you got going on you know seeing everybody doing your thing money 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 buying the gifts for the kids buying the gifts buying the gifts and then here comes New Year's and then it hits you it's like it's 2019 I'm flat fucking broke I got no money I'm depressed I'm in the same exact place I was the year before what the fuck am I doing with myself right a lot of people start feeling depression even if it's not to the point of suicide which is the bit the 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 uh, the article that I read um, they feel down and they're depressed so as a martial artist now that I've painted that full picture as a martial artist what can we do to, to help ourselves use the training that we use that we train in every day to keep us from that because see the thing is is self-defense is not just against you know wrist grab do this knife attack do this a gun attack do this that's not what that's not completely what self-defense or goshin jutsu is self-defense is defend yourself against something that's trying to harm you so that's physical mental emotional spiritual all those different areas but it's also against personal attacks of yourself it's also to protect you from you from hate and self-hate that's its whole purpose and you got to learn how to protect yourself against even your own head you talk to yourself more than you talk to anybody else and if you look at yourself and say you're a piece of shit or you're a loser or you ain't got the money or you don't have the ability fuck sooner or later you're gonna start believing your own bullshit you know what I mean and it's a lie you're believing a lie because you are good enough you can do it what you have to do is take a step back and think to yourself okay how can I do what I need to do when I need to do it what is this what are the strategies I need to create and the tactics I need to use to complete the objectives that I want to complete so you sit down and you say okay I'm gonna maybe as an example I know that there's going to be a financial responsibility October for Halloween November for Thanksgiving December for Christmas January for New Year plus I have to take care of my kids responsibilities at school plus I have to take care of my normal responsibilities at the household plus I have to take care of the everything else that goes along with so how can I do that what can I do to put myself in the best advantageous position to be able to carry out this this objective so you start writing it down you start devising a plan if you've already devised a plan for a situation you're not going to be taken by surprise there's one most people just play everything by whim and like oh, I'll spend a little extra money here and then you put a little bit more here you put a little bit more here you put a little bit more here and like I said I'm gonna deal with financial stuff first but it doesn't have to be financial stuff guys this can be your time one thing also with the holidays that makes people just eat shit and go down to depression is that they spend so much time with people they can't fucking stand and let me tell you I'll tell you right now like I said earlier I love my family but if I feel like I don't want to be around someone I'll be the first one to just go take my ass somewhere else 
I'm telling you, life is way too short for you to be spending time and giving your life to somebody that doesn't want to respect and give it back to you. So it's not just your money out, it's also your time. Life is time. You were born here, you're gonna die here. That's it, that's a time frame. And when that time is up, you're up. And if you're spending your time with people that don't like you or disrespecting the living shit out of you or whatever, don't. You're just gonna, you're gonna spiral down. There's number one, spend time with the people that you love. Spend time with the people that respect you. Number two, make a plan on the financial side of things. If you know that you got these things coming up, you need to take care of that and prepare for that as best as you can. Now, I'm gonna use personal experience uh, as an example here, and maybe you guys can, can uh, what do you call it, um, understand where I'm coming from or not, I don't know. But here we go. As a martial art teacher, I'm telling you right now, you know, no one teaches martial arts because they want to get rich. The majority of my majority of my students, pretty much all of my fucking students, make more money than me. You don't teach martial arts because you want to get rich. You teach martial arts because you're trying to make a difference in people's lives, right? Like you're not going to be a police officer and be a millionaire. You're not going to be a school teacher and be a millionaire. You're not going to be, you know, a preacher, a minister, or a monk and be a millionaire. Martial arts is the same sort of thing. It's it's you're given a service. You're given something to someone to help someone be a better person. So for me. During these next three months, it is hard because I do have the responsibilities to take care of my kids and my spouse, my wife. I do have the responsibilities of the dojo. I do have the bills and the financial obligations that I have to meet. At the same time, I have students that won't pay their bills. I got, I got students that won't pay their training fee. I got students that won't show up. And, I'm gonna and I gotta deal with that. And those same students are gonna call me. Hey, how you doing? Oh, since I have a problem, can you help? They're gonna show up and train. Now, I mean, I could do a couple different things. You know, I could be like, you know, hey, look, if you're not gonna pay for your training fees, you need to get up out of here. I'm not, I'm not helping you if you're not gonna help me. The problem with that ultimately is that my, my job as a teacher is to teach, and my job as a martial art teacher is to set an example for the, my students. And although I, from a business perspective, it doesn't, it's not smart for me to continue to help those if they're not going to you know, help me, help the business, help the dojo, um, but just because it's not the smart or the most wisest decision to make because if it's a business deal, it is the correct thing to do. Uh, for me, I feel like I should humble myself a little bit and still help the students the best I can. And then, you know, hopefully they'll take care of their responsibilities. If you make a plan in October and you're like, okay, I need to take care of the, these bills. I got to take care of, you know, a gym membership or the dojo fees. So sensei is taken care of, or I've got to take care of, you know, whatever. So my wife can go to yoga class or whatever the shit is, right? You make that first. Don't put yourself out to where you're not taking care of the people or the things in your life that bring you good energy. Cause what ends up happening? And I've, like I said, I'm speaking from experience when these students, they won't play the dojo fee and then they don't come in or they, they pay the dojo fee and they do come in and they get behind and then they just quit. But then they spend more time with people that they don't like. And then they spend all this time with people that disrespect them. And then they give them money. And then they're miserable and depressed. Well, it doesn't make sense to me. If, if your dojo, if the dojo and your sensei or your gym membership or your you know gun club or whatever it is you guys are doing, I'm just throwing this, I'm giving you examples on something that you give money so you get a service from, right? We all have things like that, whether it's a hair salon or gun club or martial arts school or gym membership or whatever. But if that's your, that's your second family and those are the people that really know you and you feel connected to and you're paying that monthly fee or training fee or whatever it is, you should be skipping out on that and then giving it to people that you know, disrespect and living shit out of you or people you don't want to spend time with. You know, and you definitely shouldn't be taken away from the things that bring you happiness. And a lot of people, they'll put a dollar amount on that, you know, and that's also a bad thing. Money does not bring happiness. Money takes care of problems, but money doesn't make happiness. There's never been a time in my life, I'm in my 40s, there's never been a time in my life where someone is like, here's some money <laughs> and I'm happy. You know what I mean? I, I mean, don't get me wrong, there's like a little joy to it. You feel like you got a few bucks in your pocket. But it, it absolutely doesn't, it doesn't make you happy. And to be quite honest, the most miserable fucking people that I know, they make a lot of money. And I think there's probably a little bit to that too. So how can you guys deal with the depression and the anxiety and the fear and the stress and all this kind of stuff as martial artists? As martial artists, you guys know that you're training in the kata and you're training in kumite and sparring. You understand how attacks happen. You understand against a linear attack, you do this. Against a circular attack, you do this. 
Well, what's a linear attack? A linear attack is a is is a kind of like a an acute injury, like a broken leg. It happens, fix it, move on with the shit. So, like a flat tire, right? A flat tire in life would be a linear attack. How do you handle linear attack? Block it, deflect it, fix it. Driving on the road, bang, flat tire. Okay, drive over to Walmart, get the fucking thing fixed. Go the fuck on with your life. Don't let it depress. Don't don't let it you know spiral you down in depression and all this kind of shit. Every time you have a problem, ask yourself: Is that a linear attack? Or is it a circular attack? A circular attack means it's going to keep coming. It's a, it's a, it's a continual thing, you know. Like um, your internet monthly internet service, right? That's a that's a circular attack. And every month on the fifth, right? You got to pay it. You got to pay it. You got to pay it. It's going to come right back around. You're going to deal with it again. Rent rent would be a circular thing. So when you're dealing with those things that like this. You have to ask yourself, well, how do I handle, what is the way that I train in martial arts, and how do I handle circular problems? Well, generally speaking, when circular happens, you go linear. When linear happens, you go circular. And it's that old saying, when circular ends, linear begins. And that type of mentality of using those skill sets to devise ways to complete the objective is what people need to do in life. And when you deal with, as a martial artist, we deal with depression and anxiety, and I'm the same way. The, the only thing that makes me different than the rest of everybody else, I make a living doing what I love to do. So I don't have to be around anybody I don't want to be around. No one comes in the dojo and don't like me. It's not like I'm gonna have people that you know are complete pricks and they don't like who I am walk in and throw hundreds of dollars down the table to train with me. That's not gonna happen. The people that come into the dojo like what I do. They like me, they like what I do, they like my teachings. I make, I make a living teaching and doing what I love to do. So I don't really have to be around, you know, a boss or be around people that, you know, tell me what to do. And I don't have those type of things. So I do have that benefit. But that doesn't mean I don't have other problems. That's what I mean. Everyone's fighting their own demon, no matter who they are, and no matter how good it looks on the outside. I'm telling you right now, everyone has demons that they're fucking with. And everyone has something that's kicking their fucking ass. So don't ever think you know someone or you know, oh, that person's this or that person's that. That's not true. Just because you perceive stuff, that doesn't mean it's going to be the absolute. Just because they're having problem A doesn't mean problem A or what they're talking to you about is actually the big fucking issue. A lot of times people are telling you the little things because they're too scared to tell you the big things. That's why it's very important for a martial artist, as a teacher of martial arts, of the old ways, you should look at all of your problems just like you look at problems in the dojo. You have a linear attack, you have circular attacks. Now, some of those linear attacks, they're not lethal. They're just attacks. Like an example, you have a linear grab. Someone grabs you with the right hand. That's not a death. You're not going to die just because someone grabs you, but you have defensive uh, maneuvers to take that linear motion that's non-lethal and to counter it and to finish it. Same thing, someone could come around with a slap to the face or something like this. That's a very circular motion. It's a circular attack that's not lethal. Well, you have defensive tactics that you can utilize to then counter that circular motion to carry out the objective you need. Same thing, now you can add a stick, which is an impact weapon. You have impact problems in your life. It, um, an impact thing would be like, Oh my God, there's a now medical bill that we've never had. There's going to be lethal problems like a life, a knife or a firearm, edged weapons, right? Oh shit, this just now happened. Oh my God, I've got to take care of this now. You know, emergencies happen. The same thing. That's why the kata is so important. Everyone's like, oh, I'll give a shit about traditional kata. Fuck kata. You know, all you do is reality-based self-defense and all this kind of stuff. And those people are the ones that's always asking me for the most help because they've lost those old teachings. They lost the connection the history and tradition and connection to the old ways. And those kata, that's why they're so important, because they have so many lessons that they teach us. And we could take those lessons and then apply them to our lives in a very beneficial way, more than just against a wrist grab do this, or against a knife do this, or against a gun do this. Understanding the kata, the philosophy, the strategies and principles of what it is that you're training, and utilizing that against the same type of attack in your life, whether it's physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, or whatever, it's very crucial towards the development of a martial artist. The problem is that most people in the modern day have never really trained with a master, so they don't know that. They get their, I call them the first Don Masters, right? First Don is like a high school diploma. First degree black belt is not a master. Fifth degree is a master. So when you have people that are like, yeah, I've got like three different first degree black belts, it's like they know the basics of three different things. They're not masters. And then you have students that don't know any better and they treat them like masters. And when you do that, it's bad because then those people who pretend to be masters and not, they put people down the wrong path and then they, they end up fucking them over and they're not giving the students what the students think that they're getting. 
And that's a bad thing. And when those people never learned how to do these things, they've never learned how to take the, they don't know the principles and strategies of the kata because they only were a first, first, maybe second degree black belt. So at best they know, okay, well this kata is against a knife attack, but they never stuck with it long enough to understand how to extract the philosophies and principles of that particular kata and apply it towards financial burden, life, marriage, raising kids, um, professional hardship. They never learned it because they never stayed anything long enough. And that's another problem with the martial arts. I mean, I've always said a million times, 99% of all martial arts are bullshit. And it's absolute truth. 99% of martial art teachers are bullshit. They have not trained long enough to be the teacher that they claim to be. And that's not saying that their martial art themselves is bullshit. I'm not, this isn't like a Taekwondo, Karate, Kung Fu thing, no. It's the teacher is not trained enough. That's why I call them the first Don Masters. You gotta stay away from people like that. Oh, I got a first degree in this and a first degree in this and you got this fucking lie. Oh, I've done like 40 years of MMA. That's stupid shit like that, you know? And it's like, it, you know they're fucking lying, you know what I mean? It's like, okay, why? If you've done 20 different martial arts, why you suck so much and why you don't know what you're doing? And those teachers are the ones that are, can really do the most damage because those students who are trying to train in martial arts are gonna study from those teachers. Those teachers are gonna to pretend to help them but don't have the answers. And those students who are martial arts students studying the way, Bushido, the way of the warrior, don't have answers. And those students are the ones that's gonna be depression, anxiety, fear, you know, stress, and they don't have the coping mechanisms, and they don't have the skill set to be able to do that. So because of that, I'm making this video, and even though it is a very generic video, uh, hopefully I've instilled at least a little bit of a spark to help you guys understand when you guys are going down, figure out why, how can you fix it, what can you do. If you need to have help, go get help. Sometimes, sometimes one person can't defeat everything that's coming at them. That's why we have armies, right? You have to have people to help you do certain things. Same thing in martial arts. So what, you know, if one person could just do it all, then they would, but one person can't. And sometimes when you're dealing with massive depression, you can't handle it on your own. So you do need help. You need to go see a professional. But if you're not to that degree where you think you need to see a professional help, make sure that you do the things necessary to get yourself out of that depressive state, that anxiety, that fear. When you see things coming, know how to handle it. Is it a linear attack? Is it a circular attack? How can I take this particular attack and then counter it to finish the problem that's in front of me? So those are the things I want to talk to you guys today um, in this video. Hopefully, like I said, I sparked a thought in your brain and, um, you know, we can, uh, you know, you guys can think about that. But anyway, um, again, one more time, I'm Krista Jacobson. I'm the head of the Buddha Yukai. So if you guys are interested in authentic ninjutsu and classical samurai bujutsu, please check out our website at www.budodoninjutsu.com. Uh, and um, if you guys do not live next to one of our dojos um, and you guys would still like to train with us, we do have an online ninjutsu dojo. You guys can train and join the online dojo and train with us that way, okay? Um, again, thank you guys very much for your love and support, and I will talk to you guys soon.